friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. Doing something a little bit different today. This is a typical uh, right-handed ebony mandolin saddle. I have a request, and up, up until recently I had never had this request, and that is to make deer antler saddles in left-handed. Well, I use the ebony, uh, this German made one here, um, and I believe they, uh, they were German made. I don't know if that's where they come from now, but that's where they used to be a long time ago when I got them from Stumac. Um, I don't know where they get them anymore. But anyway, it's, this is the ebony pattern that I use, and I am now making a, a rosewood left-handed pattern. Now the reason I make it out of rosewood is just simply so I'll be able to tell the difference which one's right-handed and which one's left-handed. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm doing and I, I was trying to figure out now how am I going to cut these notches left-handed in this. So all I had to do really, it was very simple, was butt them together like this and then I trace the notches on the top of the rosewood and that gives me an exact mirror image of the uh, ebony. So I'm in that process right now of cutting this down. I thought uh, I'll just take you along for the ride as we make our very first left-handed mandolin saddle uh, out of deer antler. And we'll make that here in a minute, but, but right now we're making the pattern. Gets a little bit confusing trying to figure out which one I'm cutting, <laughs> but it's not too bad. Pretty similar to a mirror image. Just tweaking it just to get the angles straighter. Looks really very close to identical. Just knocking off the sharp corners and things. I believe that's going to do it. There's my first left-handed saddle pattern there. And it sure does look like a mirror image of this one, so I believe we've got her just like we want her. And if I put her put them back together like this, then we should see almost identical carvings, and I do. Very identical, it's just mirror image. So I believe we're ready to use this now to make our first deer antler saddle, left-handed. I've got the deer antlers uh, blanks on my jig here to cut them. Here's my pattern. It runs up against this stop right here, and then this runs up against the blade at the, hopefully at the same point. <laughs> 
So here we go, we'll get started. <laughs> If you look there, I think you can see that uh, they're both cut, but there's still the rough edge of the deer antler right there showing. Well, when I cut the other side, that should all disappear. So I've turned the pattern around, and now I'll turn these around uh, the same way. Now we'll cut the other side. Those turned out just about as perfect as I was hoping. And uh, now we will go in and just touch them up with, by hand with a file and just clean them up. And they will be ready to go to the customer. I've got the two left-handed deer antler saddles that I made. And uh, now I just go through and touch them up with a file just to clean them up and make sure there's no sharp edges and, you know, get rid of the saw marks and things. <laughs> He also wants this a 12 inch radius and you can see I've done a 12 inch radius on it also. So if you want a radius, uh, we can do that now too. So this was not only the first left handed one, but it's also the first left handed radius one I've built. And uh, anyway, now all I have to do is put my string grooves in it. I have a little <laughs> jig like this that I use to put those in, believe it or not, that's what I use. And uh, now I'll just have to remember to turn it over so that I get the uh, opposite, uh, you know, mirror image of it. So when I mark the grooves in this one, I'll uh, turn this jig over. And uh, anyway, that's all there is to it. And I'll file the little uh, grooves in this. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, my first time ever making the uh, left-handed version of the uh, deer antler saddle. 
And uh, at least that, as far as I remember, you know, I think maybe a long time ago I made one by hand, a uh, left-handed one, but, but this is the first production model, if you will, then, of the left-handed deer antler saddle. I'm set up to make them now, so if you're a lefty and you've been wanting to try one, well, it's on my website. You can order the left-handed version. And uh, this one will be going to, uh, I believe his name is Joseph, in I believe it was Rutland, Vermont. And uh, if you happen to have deer antler laying around and you're not using it, man, I could sure use it. I can't afford to pay much for it. I'll try to pay your postage back, you know, that type of thing. But if you could ship them to me, I would sure appreciate it. I would very much appreciate it. Uh, I don't make enough money, uh, you know, on these things with the overhead and everything to really pay much for them. I, most local folks around here give them to me free, and I find a few sheds on the farm. And, of course, I'm a deer hunter, too, so if I shoot one that's got less than perfect horns, well, then I'll use those as well. But, uh, anyway, that's how I get my deer antlers, so if you can help me out with that, I would sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, friends, can you tell what this is? It looks a little bit like a railroad track, and that's probably a good clue. It's in the floor of my metal shop. There's these other pieces of metal over here that will go to it eventually also. Some pieces of pipe up further up there, and a long piece, a bunch of tubing there, square tubing. And uh, anyway, I'm in the process of fabricating something from scratch. It's going to take a gasoline motor and a bunch of wheels that will run down that track. And if you're guessing I'm building a sawmill, well then you're guessing right on the money. That's what I'm going to be building, a gasoline-powered sawmill. And I'm going to... I'm not going to film the whole process, but I'll film several of the steps and, you know, progress along the way. Yeah.